This is Michael Clayton, former Super Bowl 46 world champion of the New York football giants. And I am completely sold out against drugs and alcohol. If you want to follow us, you can go to our Facebook page. It's sold out. Twittering, it's sold out 41. And, of course, follow us right here, AFR.net, streaming live. 200 cities, just go on AFR.net. Find the town closest to you where you can listen to this program, 806 Eastern, 706 Central, every week. Of course, Michael Clayton coming up in the next segment, former Super Bowl champion with the New York Giants. And uh, we'll look forward to visiting with him about his new book. It's really exciting. But I've got somebody I really look forward to coming on this program. Uh, she finished fourth by four one-hundredths of a second in the downhill skeleton at the Olympics in Sochi. Uh, she is also an Olympic lifter that's getting ready to do some summer lift, uh, getting ready for summer lifting opportunities. Has a great background. Um, love what she's doing in terms of just bringing the sport to a younger generation and, and, and really an inspiration to a lot of people and great story. Katie Ulander joining us. Katie, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. You first of all, let me say this: the hair is really cool. <laughs> I love Thanks. it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what my dad would have said about that, but I went for it. Well, uh, listen. I wish I had the hair. I lost mine a little while back, so I didn't get my dad's <laughs> full head of hair. So anybody who's got a great full head of hair and then looks that good with the uniform, the pictures with the uniform look really good. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's a little crazy wearing a full body spandex suit, but. That's that's the attire for the job. Well, there you go. Well, tell me first of all, you're back from the Olympics. Um, besides the disappointment, because let me just say this from a lot of people in this country and a lot of people I know, because my wife and I love watching the Olympics. We watch watch you on every run. We're proud of you. We think you did a great job. And obviously, sports is about in more than anything in your sport, tenths of a second, hundreds of a second. But you have to be proud about your effort and what you did there. Yeah, I mean, I left it all out on the ice, and it was it was a hard race. I, I was coming from starting the first heat way back, and when you start that far back, the ice isn't as good, so I knew I had to throw down the first run and get myself into medal position, and I did. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to crawl into third place, but uh, I mean, that's, that's what it's about. It's about putting everything you have into what you're doing, and then you can walk away holding your head high. I mean, it hurts. It hurts to lose, but... At least you can walk away saying you did everything you could, you know. Well, see, I have two kids and three and three grandchildren, and the thing that I was really impressed by uh, was the way you supported your teammate Nicole Pikus, Pikus, who 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 won a silver medal and coming back to the Olympics, and just the way she handled uh, her victory and your defeat. I mean, one of the things about the Olympics is the Olympic spirit is supporting each other, and I thought that was a great picture at the end of that. Yeah, we worked really hard to to become a team and. You know, we we competed with each other for 10 years. And I have to admit, early on, we weren't that close, and we were pretty big rivals to one another. But uh, the last couple of years going into Sochi, it just became all about Team USA, and we just really wanted to have both of us up there on the podium. And it was it was heartbreaking that we didn't pull that off, but at the same time, at least we got one American flag up there, and, and that was what it was about. Now, you're a World Cup champion. You won it in 2006, 2007, and then you finished second in the 2008 World Championship. So your career has been, maybe if people haven't paid attention, a pretty long one. Yeah, I've got um, 17 career World Cup medals, 11 of them gold, um, a World Championship title. And, I mean, it's been a great run, and the only title I'm missing is Olympic champion. So that's my dream for Korea is to come back and, and try to get that. And I think we're, with everything I've learned over the last season, I think I can I can do it. We're with Katie think, Ulander, uh, <laughs> skeleton downhill, and uh, I think you can do it too. We're really excited about four years from now. But you got something else going that I was looking at, uh, Olympic lifting. You're interested in getting in the Summer Olympics. Tell us about what you're doing with that. Well, I started uh, doing Olympic lifting in 2011, and my I qualified for Olympic trials uh, after my second ever competition. My third was the Olympic trials for London, and um, I, I was too much of a rookie, really, I think, to, to make it, but I can't retire after three competitions, so I decided to go ahead and try for uh, for Rio. Okay, so we got snatch and clean and jerk in the Olympic competitions, and just, let, just asking here, what do you have to lift in order to qualify for the Olympics, and what did you do in your last competition? Um, well, the... Lifts are combined, and I think I'd have to hit a 200 kilo total or higher, which means I need to snatch somewhere between 90 and 100 kilos, which is right around between two, 
200 and 225. And then I'll have to clean and jerk, you know, uh, 110, I guess. 100, 110. So, so where are you in terms of that right now after three competitions and getting into this? Um, well, my most recent um, training I did, I've, I've gotten to like 85, 90K on the snatch. And uh, clean and jerk, I'm right around 100, 105 kilos. Okay, for so. people out there who have never cleaned and jerk and snatched, which I did as a football player and as a quarterback, which was the two of the exercises that I hated the most, and they're probably it's bas- it's basically I mean for people out there who don't lift, Katie, taking the weight from the floor over your head, correct? Yes, the the snatch is that one fluid mo- motion over the head, <clears throat> and it's the one where you have a wider grip. And then the clean and jerk, you go from the floor to your chest, and then you do the jerk uh, to get it overhead. Okay, the good news for you is, is is that this definitely helps in what you do with your start in in the skeleton, right? Yeah, 100%. The only thing I'd, I've been struggling with, though, is I was doing weightlifting. I didn't run at all until this season going into the Olympics, and I didn't realize how much that would affect me. <laughs> but I could run 20 meters no problem. But the only problem was anything beyond that was effort. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, anything farther than 20 meters, I was like, Coach, man, that's, that was really far, which blew my mind because I remember when I ran track, you know, I ran the 300 hurdles in high school, and I was, the days they had us run hundreds, I was like, yes, it's a short way. Now I'm like, anything over over 30, I was like, it's seriously a lot of work. So it's, it's crazy to see how even though those two sp- sports are in the power, speed, you know, genre, that training for weightlifting is a really short burst of power, and it's, it's not for very long. And in skeleton, I have to run up to 40 meters. So, I mean, they do correlate, but it, it does take a little bit of skill to be able to do both. And I, I'm lucky to have a coach that understands what it takes to train for both sports. And it's, it's going to be a challenge balancing them both, but um, I'm up for the challenge for sure. Katie Ulander, Olympic Sochi, just got back, uh, finished fourth by four one hundredths of a second. Of course, she's going to be back, and we've just been talking about uh, her now trying for the Olympic Summer Olympics, which is really awesome. You could double that, double that up. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me this. You know, the difference between the luge and skeleton. Of course, luge, you're going down feet first. Skeleton, you're 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 jumping on this sucker head first with your helmet on. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me. My wife the other night, we were sitting on the couch. She goes. That's the craziest thing I've ever seen. I said, I said, eighty miles an hour head first on, and that's not a real, you know, it it doesn't look like that sled is really sturdy, does it? I mean, well, the sled is like it goes from. I mean, the sled I'm riding now is pretty big. It goes to my shins, my shoulders, and it weighs about seventy pounds. So, I mean, that's another aspect that where weightlifting really helps because I'm pushing fifty percent of my body weight. Um, but then, yeah, you do, like, the worm dance move onto the sled after sprinting with it. I mean, you're running bent over with the sled as well, and it requires a lot of hip mobility. And weightlifting is, is great for that because you get a lot of strength and range of motion because dropping under the weight and your butt's basically on the floor when you catch it. And so, you know, those two sports really help each other in, in that aspect. Um, but 80 but, miles an hour, Katie, what is that like? Uh, if you have, Have you ever had a dream where you're flying? It yes. feels a lot like that. It's pretty amazing. It's exhilarating, and, you know, you get a little scared at first when you start going down the hill, but then you realize you don't have brakes, so you might as well just go with it. <laughs> okay, so it's kind of like if you're riding in an SUV, you're kind of high, so if you're going like 80, 90 miles an hour, fine. But when you're in like a Corvette or one of those cars where you're really close to the ground, is that anything like that where you like just feel like you're going a lot faster? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't know. All I know now is that I feel a lot more comfortable being close to the ground going fast. Whereas, like, bobsledders, they can see everything. I think now if I was I was sitting up higher and I could see how fast I was going, I think it would freak me out. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, it freaks me out just watching it on TV because that's it's just crazy. And, you know, you got a lot of uh, accolades during the Olympics for your helmet. Tell us, tell us about the Eagle helmet and the American thing. That was cool. Well, the, the first helmet I had, I got um, the design from Jimmy Shea, who's the Olympic gold medalist in 2002. And... Um, I then in 2010, I became really good friends with Peekaboo Street. Yeah, he's a really great uh, alpine skier, and uh, she was my mentor, helped me get over. Like the, my father passed away in 2009, um, so the 2010 Olympics was one year exactly to his death, and I was having a really hard time figuring out how to live my life without him because he was basically my my foundation, my 
everything I did, I went through him and got advice. And, you know, every decision I made, I thought of him when I did it. So when I lost him, I was pretty confused how to continue living without him. And Peekaboo was one of the first people to just tell me everything was going to be okay and started asking the right questions. And I realized that he had left me with the right tools to continue living without him because he never really told me what to do. He always asked questions so that I would critically think about what I was going to do. But in that, I got confidence in, in making those decisions. And Peekaboo started doing that with me again, and I realized that I could do it. Um, and so the helmet I used in this Olympics was from her designer uh, in, when she competed. Well, just to say this, your dad's a heck of a coach because that's what great coaches do. And, uh, of course, he was a great baseball player uh, with the Minnesota Twins, the 60s and 70s, Cincinnati Reds, a coach of the Cleveland Indians. Uh, my dad played in the NFL for 17 years around the same time and uh, had your dad's baseball card. Just wanted you to know that, Minnesota Twins. you got to love it. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's kind of what I stand for is that whole traditionalist kind of view on life. You take responsibility for winning or losing, and you just put the best you you can out there. I mean, I feel like a lot of kids today forget that it's not, you know, something that you're supposed to be given. People will help you once you help yourself, and, and that's what he always taught me. So he's like, if you go out there and you bust your butt, people are going to help you get there. But you gotta you got to work for it. And, I mean, Liberty Mutual is my main sponsor right now, and, and that's their philosophy. And I told them, I was like, you know, I don't, I don't take charity. All the support I get, I'm going to take it seriously and when I step onto the line to represent the United States of America I've helped me get here and I'm not going to let it go to waste man I couldn't have said it better and what an example for young people and and that's one of the things we love on our show is is having athletes that really care about the next generation and who are who are living to make a difference and Katie man has this gone by fast I really appreciate you coming in and congratulations on the results from the Olympics I know you're going to be great in four years there but we're really excited about your weightlifting career and Please uh, keep in touch about that and about how you're doing with that. Yeah, I will. My next uh, big meet is July 17th in Salt Lake City. It's the national championship. And pretty much the only chance I have to qualify is for the world championship uh, for weightlifting. Katie Ulander. Thanks, Katie.